The National Oat Breeding Program, formerly led by the South Australian Research and Development Institute, SADI, the research division of the Department of Primary Industries and Regions in South Australia, and WA's Department of Primary Industries and Regional Development, DPIRD, is powering towards its second successful year under the commercial leadership of Intergrain. Backed by investment, including by GIDC and AgriFutures Australia, Intergrain is building on SADI's two previous decades to develop and deliver fit-for-purpose oat and grain and hay varieties, prioritising growers' returns. Primarily it's yield to start with, making sure that what we're going to come out is very high yielding and then we look at quality, so physical quality, test weight screenings, making sure it's good for both of them, and intrinsic qualities, the beta-glucans, etc. That's where genomics will really come into its own and make sure that what we're producing is of a high standard across the board, across all the package of traits we breed for. SADI raised the value and profile of Australia's oat production, securing a strong global reputation for Australia as a quality oat producer and exporter. Now Intergrain is leveraging off those successes to fast forward what SADI was able to do. SADI has really been responsible for essentially having input into the development of virtually every uh, commercial variety that's of note uh, today. So they've really, over that time, really driven the program, the delivery of market leading varieties, and also the identification of the key quality traits that are going to drive the markets into the future. With the industry's sustainability and profitability goals, Intergrain is increasing the scale of oat breeding, efficiency and field testing capacity, while decreasing variety release times for faster industry adoption of improved genetics. We've been able to effectively triple the size of the Saudi breeding program in the space of 18 months. And we're also making sure that the first stage of selection is done at a much higher resolution with many more genotypes. So that enables us to, to drive genetic gain faster through having a higher selection intensity and a greater genetic diversity. Trial sites just outside York feature a snapshot of Intergrain's commercial capacity to have large trials of varieties and systems in place. So this is Bilby. Uh, would you agree, Pamela, the premium semi-dwarf variety in Australia? I would, yes. So, uh, we released this in 2019 and I'm very pleased about its grain yield potential. Here, a selection of varieties coming through the breeding program are showcased, highlighting the results of using genomics, the DNA of plants and innovative speed breeding technology. We actually have our glasses set up to be running at 24 degrees, day and night. We have full lighting in there, uh, which basically means that instead of in the old system planting a seed and, and harvesting it four or five months later, we're able to do that in about 10 or 11 weeks. So really, again, speeding it all up. Dr. Pamela Zawir, a researcher formerly from Saudi, passionately acknowledges Saudi's role in shaping the National Oat Breeding Program to what it is today. In the 26 years that I've been in this position, uh, we've released 23 varieties. In terms of the milling varieties, the prime varieties would be Matika, Williams, Bannister, and now we have two other varieties that are just have been released and introduced. And I think that Bilby and Koala will have a significant impact. Indeed, SADI's program resulted in oat varieties accounting for up to 85% of the 160,000 tonnes of milling oats grown in southeastern and in Western Australia. The oat and hay breeding program has also released varieties such as Malgara and Korobup, featuring improved yield and quality. And so Korobup oh. is a line, it's actually the benchmark for septoria in Western Australia. Septoria is the biggest disease in the West, and this is the benchmark. It is, and all you have to do is look at the colour as well, um, which is an important um, export hay trait. The key part about oat and hay is there's a lot of diversity comes in that seems to be quite good for that space, which brings in a lot of exciting tolerances, potential tolerances for diseases like septoria and oat crown rust. Again, there's a GFC project in oat crown rust, so by leveraging between the, the oat grain and the oat hay program, we will make sure that there's benefits going forwards in both directions. Making sure the trials match growers' local conditions is a key priority, along with participation in public research to determine how international varieties can be integrated to improve Australian varieties, as Alan explains. What I'm standing in here, this is Bannister. 
the most widely grown variety in Australia, and this is a line from, from Europe. So this is in the CSIRO-led, uh, geodesy-funded phenology project. And what we're trying to do is see whether there's something that we can get out of here and put it into here to make this variety better in Australia. As has happened in winter wheat, where there's been a, uh, a great um, expansion of how much winter wheat goes into Australia, and therefore more sowing opportunities, we want to do the same thing in oats. So can we get this variety, attributes from here, to work in here so we can have sowing in, in February and March. Oats are a key rotational crop and well established as a stock feed. But the future is offering additional agronomic advantages for Australian farming systems, including comprehensive expansion into the food industry. I think there's so much potential for oats in Australia, especially since these days it's not just porridge that oats are being used for. And I think that's the growth potential is that there are going to be new oat products that are eaten not just at breakfast, but at lunch and at dinner time, and that will grow the increase in oat production. The National Oat Breeding Program, by ensuring that the growers have access to competitive varieties, will really help shore up and drive the inclusion of oats as a profitable option for Australian growers into the future.